What up? What up, dog? What up? What's up? Man, chilling, man, chilling. Getting these. Uh, we just went live on YouTube, so we got some folks coming in on the show. I had to go get me a drink, dog. Watching this shit. Yeah, this this game will force you to drink. You're drinking. I'm smoking. It's Monday night. Things are good, brother. Let me shut this off before they fucking ban us. Um, you got the game. Though. You, you got the game, so you can watch it, um, and we can talk about it from there. Um, hey, you ain't missing nothing. I mean, this college game is about as – it's like watching paint dry at this point. Yeah, we're, we're soft as runny pussy too, man. I'm just telling you. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm telling you. Holy my, my only two pet peeves in this life are cold butter and dry pussy, dog. There's nothing uh, worse than uh, cold butter. It tears up your toast when it's all hot and warm. And then there's nothing worse than the desert down there between the old moose knuckle. That, that'll that tear your shit up, too. It's bad now, I news. I haven't, bad heard moose news. Knuckle. I haven't heard moose knuckle in quite a bit. Yeah, dog, especially these days with all the yoga pants everywhere, the moose knuckles are prevalent. Fuck, uh, man. Houston coach got fired. Who? What Houston no, coach? The, no, they won. He didn't get fired. Uh, who's saying that? They're saying that, that in the chat. I'm like no, what, Houston what? UTSA. That game, we're gonna talk about that game on the show. But that game yesterday was a fucking barn burner, bro. That was really? nuts. Absolutely. That that quarterback for Houston. You need to go scout that kid, coach. Uh, the tune kid. He's yeah. fucking good. I love. I mean, he's probably just a really good college player, but he's a damn good college player. I'll give him that. He balled the fuck out yesterday. Hey, I talked about this this morning on my show, though. I'm like. You do hear what you're saying, though. UTSA was in a barn burner with Houston. That is 50,000 people at the, at the Alamo Dome, Doug. That's how watered down the landscape of college football has become, though. I mean, it's just they started their program in 2011, and they built it in 10 years to – I mean, shit, they were ranked damn near all last year, and they won yeah. their conference, and now they're going four overtimes with Houston, and – Larry the Coulter UTSA's started, putting Larry themselves Coulter in position to all these conference jumps. They're going to be another team that talks about that shit. Yeah, yes, it's watered down, but it's fucking so awesome, dog. Like, it hasn't the, the college football from Thursday to Friday to Saturday to yesterday to tonight. It's just, it's even with all the conference realignment and all the bullshit and the rivalries being gone and blah, 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 blah. It's still the best fucking product out there. The NFL is awesome, but college football is where it's at. You know it. I know it. Everyone knows it. This shit is fucking dope. Yeah, it's it's uh it's unfortunate that we we're, we're so soft though. Oh, bro, we're look. It it's it's gotten to the point where the physicality and the vicious nature of football, why I wanted to play in the first place, has been regulated out of the game, and that I think that's too bad. I mean, we've talked about this several times on your show, but and we'll continue to talk about it. The I, I think that it's a good thing sometimes to get your teeth knocked and to get your ass kicked and to have to come back and overcome that physical adversity. It's not just the mental adversity that football brings and being hot and have football being hard. It's the it's one of the things I love about offensive and defensive line play, bro. It's that my position never really changes. Like Yes, you can't hit the quarterback anymore, and you can't really hit anybody across the middle, and the safeties can't annihilate folks. And you know, it, it's you get they regulated some of the the helmet to helmet shit out of the game, but not what I play. My positions are vicious as fuck, and like you can do whatever you want, you can really fuck somebody up in the trench still. So that's for as soft as it is, it's still by far unequivocally the best game in the world. So I'll oh, yeah. take it. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that. No question. Like if it wasn't, we'd stop watching and we'd, we'd do something else. So, I mean, oh, 100%. Still, it's just a matter of uh, getting, a, I mean, it's just not what we once knew it as. Ooh, well, it, it's, you know, I don't mean to sound like the old guy that's like, get off my fucking lawn or nothing, but I, I do. miss, <laughs> I, <laughs> I miss the, I miss the rivalries. I think that eliminating the Big 12, Big 8 conference, which was once a backbone of college football, I think eventually it will. they will regret it. Um, the money chase and the conference realignment, I don't think it's going to be as nice to UCLA, USC, Texas, and Oklahoma as they think it's going to be. 
Um, and, and, you know, it's some teams are going to benefit greatly from conference realignment and some teams, their brand is going to substantially be hurt by conference realignment, i.e. look what conference realignment did to, to Texas A&M and Missouri. Just use those two. Texas A&M went from a uh, Big 12 program to a national brand top 10 team every year, SEC West, fucking powerhouse. And Missouri went from a shitty, let's just be real, a shitty fucking mountain or a shitty Big 12 North team to an SEC East team. And, you know, their brand couldn't be, any, even though they suck in the SEC, they're still in the fucking SEC. Talk about a jump. They didn't do anything to get in that conference. They just struck when the iron was hot. Go on the other side of it, though, bro. And Nebraska and Colorado, we just talked about this. Two teams that my entire life were always in the top 25. Mm -hmm. The hatred and that rivalry is real. I played in it five times. Why I wanted to play at CU. And both of those teams, if I bet you if you could go back in time and say, do you really want to start off conference realignment and leave? Both of them would say no. All right. Yeah, I hear you. Um, did you are, are you watching? Is there a targeting call everybody's talking about? Uh, another touchdown by Clemson. There, there was a horseshit targeting call, but it's it's nothing that. I mean, it's nothing that's not normal. These fucking targeting calls in college football have gotten. I mean, they are absolutely ridiculous. I mean, just absolutely terrible. So I, I, it, it makes me not want to coach. I'm, I, I mean, well, not, it makes me not want to watch. I'm telling you. I don't know. I don't know how you can, as a defensive player. I don't know how you can play. Like I. At, look, it's it's fourteen to three. Clemson just you know is is should and and is going to win this game. I don't know how you can play in this game as a defender anymore when you've got to think about hitting the guy rather than just hitting him. What what really kills me about all this is you know this damn well and everybody watching knows when you go half speed in this game or you start thinking you get fucking hurt. And now they're that. telling they're telling people to think on the field like. Dabo Sweeney sitting here pleading with the fucking ref. Like, what do you want him to do? He's not There's fucking more Superman. There's injuries now that you've never seen. Like, what, what What? exactly do you want the defender to do? I mean, Dabo's, like, laughing about it. Like, this is fucking comedy at this point. And the fact that they kicked the kid out from, um, like, if you get a targeting penalty, you get kicked out, and you can't play the first half of the next week? Fuck you, NCAA. It's, like, that's the worst rule in the world, man. That's some fucking bullshit. Like, there's a malicious intent, and then there's a bang-bang play. And we're Look, kicking guys out for bang-bang plays. The LSU dude yesterday. That's malicious. That was malicious. That yeah. dude needs to be suspended. By the way, he's he, a Juco kid. He's a fucking Garden City Juco kid who I would have choke-fucked, but we're allowing, yeah, you know. He's dumber uh, than a box of fucking rocks. That was absolutely ridiculous. Like, yeah, that was dog, like, you can't, like, like stupid. Yeah, you can't leap and jump at him like a fucking salmon jumping out of the fucking water and hit him in the head and then stand over there like, what do we? What do you mean it's illegal? And the thing that kills me the most is fake-ass tough guy Brian Kelly, dog. Like, Brian Kelly's such a fake tough guy. He yells uh, at, like, the, the manager and, like, I bet you he yells at the equipment yeah. people and, like, and then he's he'll yell at the him. chick in the water. But this, the big fucking, the big defensive line fucking warrior that just speared a dude and cost him 15 yards, he's over there like, it's okay, buddy. We're good. Don't worry oh, about it. We're, we'll oh, teach you how to do it, right? Last night, I got I to gotta show it because it's so fucking hilarious. I mean, Brian Kelly, grow some balls, dog, and tell him, like, you're a fucking dummy. Don't do this stupid shit. Look at him. Yeah, let's be nice to him. Let's you whisper just, to you him. You can't do let's that, bro. Look at this. this. Oh, that's there fucking terrible. That's like, just malicious. There's a difference between that's that's Brian Kelly's going to say, that's probably borderline. Brian Kelly's like, here, when Brian Kelly pulls him up, let me talk to him. He's going to say, come on, son, you just can't do that. You, you can't, just can't do, that. do that, bro. Yeah. And the other coach is like, listen, 11, you're really, you're special, so... And the thing is, though, I bet you, I bet you, it's gotten to the point where they're like, we can't coach them hard because if we do, we'll go to the transfer portal. Hey, the coach, their best player went to the portal. Number seven, the receiver. After He's the game. left. Yeah. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You are you telling me that somebody from LSU actually went to the transfer portal because they coached him hard? Their best player. Fuck. Fuck. This is exactly what I'm talking about, Jay. Hey, this hold is, on, this, fuck, fuck, 
fuck? Look, look, oh. look, look, look. I want you to see this motherfucker whispering to him. Look at this. Watch his lips. Watch his lips. You just can't do it, son. You can't you do it. Can't you do just it, can't son. do it. But apparently he's got to coach his whole team like this because the best receiver yeah. left because no, he you got just coached can't do it. Matt, Matt, I got to be honest. I would have choked fucked him. I would have had him and said, you fucking idiot. You fucking retard. And your, your whole your whole team would have transferred today. <laughs> 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 if you and I were coaching, the entire team would be like, these guys are jerks. I'm entering the portal. Be like, bitch, like, get out. Problem, though. <laughs> like, what? It, like, uh, this is the thing. There's a fundamental hierarchy issue. Don't allow them to enter the portal. You're allowing them to have an enabled sense of ability to leave because they got yelled at. And guess what? They're going to get fired at McDonald's when they get fucking kicked out of college. Well, that's my point. Like, I, I'm of the mindset that if you want to go to the transfer portal, kick rocks, motherfucker, and go to the transfer portal. Uh, all day. All day. I'm not trying to, like, the great Gary Barnett, who was my coach in college. All right. Yeah. And the, an unbelievable man. He he always used to say, I'm trying to find guys to reform. I'm not trying to guy, find guys to recruit. I'm trying to find guys that are on the edge of, like, being either in fucking jail or on the football field. I'm not looking for fucking choir boys. Like if you, the era that I played in at CU, literally best friends of mine are doing 20 years in prison and shit. Like I'm not, I'm not saying that that's a good thing. That's not a good thing necessarily. I'm saying that there's a line that has to be walked here and I'm not looking for fucking choir boys. I want the man, re repeat, man, that I can fucking yell at on the field and be like, yo, get your fucking shit together. You're better than this. And he knows that I want him to go to the NFL and get fucking paid big bucks. That's why I'm on his ass. Because I also want to make that money and I want my mortgage to get paid too. And the way that my shit gets paid is for him to do his fucking job. So whether it's, a guy that I'm training around, you know, all around college football. We're about to watch this clip from CU and three of the five starters from the University of Colorado are guys I work with, you know, damn near all the time. Two of them are guys I placed up there at CU and I've been working with Casey Roddick, who's from uh, Southern California for four years. So it hurts me when they don't perform the way they should. And I, I don't sugarcoat it for them. Like, guys, you have to be fucking better than this. And those uh, men that, that can handle that coach, those are the ones that are going to fucking make it anyway. All these other pussies yeah. that look like Tarzan and play like Jane, they ain't going to fucking make it no way. You know they ain't. They're just going to get They're gonna get into camp because they look fucking good, and they're going to Vernon Goldston out. And if you don't know who Vernon Goldston is, go Google that soft bitch's name because I've, that guy stole $50 million from the Jets. $50 million, man. Me. Indeed. So let, let break, let's break that up to the people out here. Everybody that wants to know, we're going to do this on Monday night. So we are willing, we want to take all people's suggestions. We want to take okay. your comments, chime okay. in on Twitter. We're, we're on Twitter live, chime in on Twitter, chime in on YouTube. I, I see the people pouring into the show. Appreciate everybody. Hit the like button, subscribe, become a member because we're about to take this to another level. Let's Me and go. Matt, we're going to call it the RPO show. And it stands for fucking real it stands for fucking passionate and offensive. And it, I love whether you it. Take it offensively or we're talking offense, whether I don't give a fuck, we're going to be real passionate and offensive. So you can take it how you want to talk about it. But we're going to break down football games. We're going to break down live Monday night games. We're going to do it all. Uh, there's probably not a platform for me and Matt to be live on because they're sure they're going to ban us. But we're going to be pretty good and try to do this the right way. So That's why that's uh, why we're good. If they're not banning us, we're doing it wrong. Yeah, fuck it. But but we're going to get right into it from this weekend's games. You saw me break it down on Twitter. You're going to get an O-line guru's perspective. And we're going to break down actually Matt's uh, alma mater in Colorado here. So we're going to get to a, uh, to a segment here. And... Um, Matt, let me let me fast forward this to let you talk to this through this uh, formation and so on real quick. Uh, right here, I'm going to pause it. I want you to talk to it for through one minute as far as what you're discussing up front um, and et cetera, et cetera. And then we're going to break this down and get into each game this weekend. Plus, we're going to break down some of the Clemson from today. And then uh, 
I'm going to let Matt talk to you for one minute about what we see, and then we're going to talk about skill. I'll talk about the skill players, and Matt's going to talk about the defense and the O-line. And Matt has three players up on, on the O-line here that have uh, that know better than this, along with the QB, uh, as far as what's going on here. And uh, I'm going to let, you, let him talk you through this so you understand, in layman's terms, what we're looking at. All right, so this is fourth and one. This is the first drive of the game for CU. I was at this game. And it's amazing what you see on TV rather than being up in the box where I was in the back corner. So I was looking at this from the back when I was there live. And I didn't see it as well as I could see it here uh, on TV. But they run the ball to the open side down here. And I, I, I can't believe it looking at this look. They're in 12 personnel tight end heavy. And the two tight ends are at the top of the screen with Brady Russell, number 38, in the scissor position where he could come back and, and scissor back. The tight end and the back are on the same side, which is 90% of the time that's a protection look. You don't usually put them on the same side to run unless you're running quarterback power, which they are, but they're doing it to the closed side. Not only that, but when they do it, they pull the left guard. He pops out to the left. The left tackle and the center hit each other. The center and the right guard are trying to ace block. The nose tackle here is TCU seems to be in like a – they're trying to be in like a bare front, but they've got this – the, the right outside linebacker down here has walked out, and the other linebacker or Nichols at the top of the screen on the hash because of the alignment. They're, they they got another receiver out there, so they're three by one essentially in this look. And it, the fact that they don't call this to the right, they don't run some kind of zone right concept, there's not a key word on the line of scrimmage for the quarterback to go up and go, easy, easy, easy. Hey, uh, Sparrow, 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 set hut and snap the ball and gain one yard to the right. I mean, if, if they do this correctly on a variety of different blocking schemes, whether it's double teams at the point of attack, whether you're trade blocking, whether you're pulling the left guard across the formation, if you can't get a yard here, you're running backwards. I mean, this is an absolute unbelievable screw-up, in my opinion. And it, I don't know if it's on the player or if it's on the coach, but as the quarterback, I don't expect an offensive lineman to change the play ever. As an offensive lineman, I never in my life changed the play. I've changed the protection, but I've never changed the play. It's on the quarterback to walk up. I don't care what your quarter, your offensive coordinator, your quarterback coach, or your head coach say. If you don't have the leadership or the audacity or the intestinal fortitude to walk up and see this look and change the play and run the ball the other way or call timeout and come off the field and talk about it, you shouldn't be on the field. So... I'm going to show that, throw that to you. What would you be telling Brendan Lewis right here, the second year signal caller for CU? I mean, this is an atrocious fuck up. Yeah, I want to. I want to. First of all, is there? Are they three by one over here on the right side? And there. Yeah, there's okay. another receiver over there. Look, I mean, shit, they got dude. They're like in quads, bro. They don't uh, even they're have a receiver. In quads play. here. So let me. So let they, me they're in quads right to the to the field, and they and then they run left. Oh yeah, let me write it up right here. Fuck me. You gotta be kidding me. So they they essentially they could throw like a screen pass here. They could throw it to the slot receiver and probably get a yard rather than running it the way they run it. What kills me is the left tackle and the center, they run into each other because they're they're trying like hell to win at the line of scrimmage. This isn't on the kids, bro. Like hey. I, I can't sit here and throw it on the guys. Casey Roddick, Austin Johnson, and, and Jake Wiley, three of those five guys are my players. And I know they know the difference, but again, offensive linemen don't change the fucking play on the line of scrimmage. Yes, that's what they're in, right all there. Right, well, all right, coach, talk to the crowd about it. I'm gonna get up on the board. You talk me through it. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. So th this, you're looking at this right here, and they've got they're walked out here. So they've got their 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 will linebacker or whoever that is walked out here on the quad in between your tight end heavy and your X. And, the, I mean, he's in no man's land right there from a run game perspective. If he attacks, you pull it and throw the screen. If he doesn't attack, you give it. Or you run quarterback power. So remember, it's only a yard. Like, we're trying to get a fucking yard. And the, the way that they do this here is they pull the left guard on the backside out, and they try and isolate him on nobody. And if you're your left guard, and that's Casey Roddick, who's a fucking man. Like, he's a dude. And the fact that they're not just double teaming this dude at the point of attack here to the second level and just everybody's running left together, it's amazing. I just don't understand the blocking scheme. And then, I mean, okay, you're, you're the quarterback coach here. You put yourself in Mike Sanford's shoes. What do you tell Brendan Lewis? Number one, you got to apologize and be like, I'm sorry I put you in this situation. But number two, like, 
don't you expect your quarterback to be able to change this shit? Uh, yeah, but this is my thing. First of all, as an OC or as an O-line guy, we're looking for A&O, and, 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 and all you guys out there that don't understand that, that means angle and opportunity. As a coordinator, I'm trying to get my O-line angle and opportunity, the best angle and opportunity to succeed. We have it here. We have what we call a deuce. We can Fucking work the backside. We have what's called an arc block. We have the way to even arc, Coach. There's not even a fucking five technique over there. There's and no one there. Here. How are we not just fucking running the football right there? They, they should be hitting them with their head on the goalpost, dog. That has to be on the scouting report. That has to be embedded in your guys from the jump. This has to be coaching 101, football 101. Angle and opportunity is to the field. We tried to be cute and go to the boundary, and we're to a dead side, fucking short side of the field, and we're trying to be cute. And people ask Matt, maybe you could break this down for them. People ask, why are they in this odd front? And I'm telling people, and everyone on Twitter thinks that they know. But anyway, I'm like, they're in an odd front, so you don't know what gap responsibility they are. 100%. In. And really, and whether it's odd or bare, they, they can get – you can move so much – and those kind of fronts, it makes it really hard for the offensive line to get combo blocks and things of that nature. So, I mean, shit, it is what it is, man. I, they they got to be better than that, though. I'll tell you that. That's for goddamn sure. But hey, at least at least people at in Boulder were there to see the game as opposed to UCLA. <laughs> ah, shit. Uh, no doubt, no doubt about it. Uh, having said that, having said that. Um, Coach, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm from here. I mean, I. I mean, it, are people even embarrassed about it? Does anyone give a fuck? I, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think we should care because, because, coach, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, we have the Lakers, we have the Dodgers, we have pussy, we have acting, we have Hollywood, <laughs> we have the beach, we have the snow. We don't well, give it's a like. Fuck. It's like what Dr. Dre says, shit. bro. Everybody comes to LA for the women, weed, and weather. And, and, and Matt, you made you made a uh, you made a comment. Don't schedule Bowling Green. And and, and it, Bowling Green. And it resonated with me because I'm like, okay, don't schedule Bowling Green. And I hate that because do I tell Alabama don't schedule Mercer? Do I yes. tell? It, yeah. Well, we do say it, but guess what? Alabama's still fucking sold out. Yeah, I agree, but I I hate I despise. Look, oh, me too. I don't care if they want to schedule Bowling Green, schedule them. This is what's going to happen. But I, I prefer the Power Five to play the Power Five. Like my, I played for the University of Colorado back in the day, and we prided ourselves on playing real football every week. Like we, there were very few times where we played lesser division schools. And for like this year alone, CU is one of like only three schools in the entire country that are that are playing no FCS teams. Like that, we play Air Force next week. Everybody else we play is a is a Power Five D one school, and Air Force is really fucking good. So, I I think that the Power Five and the Group of Five should play each other constantly. I hate the Mercer Alabama games in November. I don't like like fuck man. I'm pretty Tennessee sure UCLA Ball is State. playing. Aren't they playing Arkansas State this week? I, yeah. Like, yeah. if you thought last week's attendance was shitty, wait until this Saturday. Why the fuck would you go see UCLA, Arkansas State, when you can sit in your house in the air conditioning and watch every game? Utah, the best in the West. Uh, here, here's a little thing. Utah, who I want to talk about. This is Some our bitches. savior on the West Coast. Um, Utah fucked me so bad, bro. I had a 12 leg parlay this weekend and 11 of my legs hit and Utah fucked me by three points. So bastards, Utah's our fucking <laughs> Utah's our pick on the West coast is coming out. They go to a, to a, to a Florida team, which we can say is in a rebuild mode. They're not. Yeah. I like, of- look, I, I like Billy Napier a lot. I think he's going to do a good job, but. The fact that number seven Utah went to the swamp and shit on themselves like this and lost, like the big, the Pac-12 fucked. Oregon got absolutely annihilated. USC is not going to go undefeated. Ha- like that's it. There's no no chance of getting in the playoff. Whatsoever. Got white boys out here. 
Well, I I want you to hear my commentary on this. I want everybody to see this commentary <laughs> because this is the truth, and it's unfortunate. Let's listen to this. <laughs> Man, Georgia got white boys out here making Oregon look fucking bad. Bunch of Hunter Renfro's out here gashing Oregon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oregon looks fucking awful. Terrible. Oh my god! UCLA struggling versus Bowling fucking Green. USC. Pac-12 is bad, dog. Hey. But Oregon sure looks pretty around this motherfucker, don't they? I mean, they look good. They, yeah, man. I mean, they, yeah, they, they look great. I mean, their uniforms are really, they're going to look good in the jersey holder case or cases after they're done playing. I mean, look, I, the, the Pac 12 is so, the Pac 12 is the Mountain West, Jay. Yeah. And, and, unfor- yeah. and it's so unfortunate. And honestly, if you're UCLA and USC, why wouldn't you want to fucking jump ship and leave? It sucks. I mean, it's such a shitty conference. So I, I really hope that the Pac-12 and the Big 12 merge because I think that could be a very powerful conference with the, no, with, the with USC and UCLA leaving. So, But it's not a good look when your top two teams, the top, you know, the top two teams in the conference, everybody thinks is going to meet in the no, Pac-12 title. Here. Can he believe- both Both go and lose. So I mean, USC looked good, I guess, if you want to say that, beating Rice the way they did is a good thing, but Rice is – they still play football there? Coach, you got to have a fucking 4.0 to go there. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I no shit. No no reason why Rice would be good. So, so Coach, <laughs> let's talk about this real quick. So, I want to let everybody understand football, and, and uh, I want to – I want to see if I could change this. Uh, nope, I can't. Okay, but we'll show it. They're in an odd look with they walked up Mike and Monster or Whip or whatever we're going to call the two inside well, Is this back. LSU for State last year or last, last night? Last night. Yeah, um, yeah. And so we got a nickel alert here. So people don't – I want people to understand. We got a nickel alert. The safety's at eight yards or less. He's creeping. In the scouting report, we want them right. to know. And, 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 and explain to people how this fucking cunt who came out on the media and said O-line is soft and dumb. Explain to what you're teaching your left tackle here as far as this guy walking down because you're telling your Q and everybody on the O-line to be alerted here. Let me make it big for you. That's what she said. Um, hey, hey. So, so first of all, there's number one thing I'm noticing is they're in an odd front with two walked up, like, yes. with two walked yep. up linebackers, right? So yep. one of those two linebackers – or this cat down here on the bottom that's on the, the, the isolated receiver here, one of those cats is the fourth defensive lineman, right? And it's probably not the corner. So one of these two linebackers, we got to say, is the fourth guy. Then the dude that's stacked at the top of the, of the formation here that the receiver's pointing at, that's the extra defender. So there's three defenders for two receivers at the top of the screen here. And he's in a walked formation. So he's walked outside the tackle box right now. So we've got a fucking... We have to accommodate for that cat at the top, knowing that he's stacked. So 100%, he can just knife this inside. It's going to be hard for that receiver, number one, to get there. Number two, he's not paid to block anyway. So they can obviously pass that off. So the left tackle and everybody, the uncovered offensive lineman up front, has got to fucking kick out here through the man next to him. It's like that pendulum. If you see a a five-ball pendulum and you drop this ball and the one at the end on the other side pops off, that's all offensive line play is here. But what hangs this up is they're mugging both linebackers. But the thing is, they can't bring the slot and both linebackers. They've got to drop somebody out. So they're trying to hold one of the guards here if they're going to bring the top side linebacker here from the bottom and he's going to blitz. So they're holding one of the linebackers or one of the guards with the linebackers being what's called mugged. So when both of these two inside linebackers walk up to the line of scrimmage here and they break the heel line of the offensive line, now the offensive lineman have to say mug, 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 and it changes the mic point. The mic point means the most dangerous second-level defender. It does not mean middle linebacker. Anybody that tells you it means middle linebacker, I want you to show me how we're going to get the middle of 11 motherfuckers on the field. So, obviously, I would point the top of the guy at the line of scrimmage here, and it would either be a four-man Louie call, or if both guys are mugging right here, all right, we either have to full turn or... There's one of three ways. Four-man Louie, 
full turn tally where everybody turns down and we cut the furthest guy here on the right or or that is face pressure so everybody can just go 5-0 and take the guy in front of them and play games and stay on the same level so if they do run any pick concepts with the linebackers here to the ear hole of the adjacent lineman uh, and they wrap a defensive lineman or vice versa at least the guy coming off the edge is in face pressure on the quarterback so that guy in turn can get rid of the ball to the open receiver. Because whenever there's a space blitzed from, that space is then voided. So you can attack voided spaces. So, well, yeah, no linemen are stupid. You talk to, talk to talk me through it here. So you're talking four-man Louis for that everybody understand. That means that so, the, yeah, so if both these the linebackers in the middle walk the in. and side, Four guys left. One, here. two, three, four. Perfect. And okay, then the right those, guard, the right tackle, and the four technique are one-on-one. On one. Take this, or we're going to use it as a side adjust for the cue. Same with this. We got these guys yep. now. This is the alert. That is the alert, guy, because our left tackle Perfect. sees I like, walk down. He is out of the ordinary. He's yep. an alert. Watch, watch, watch. Alert, alert, alert. Whatever. So this is the left tackle being coached by a great old line guy to understand. Yep. Okay, our left tackle has to understand secondary support and. They're not just dumb fucks sitting there at the line of scrimmage looking to double team somebody using their weight. People don't realize. Yeah, we're we're pretty dumb. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, no shit. So, okay, so we're gonna four man slide this to the left. We're gonna pick up the nickel if possible, but we're for sure gonna get the most dangerous guys in the bit. So, one hundred percent. Anybody that happens to stay in the slide, we're picking up. We're going to side adjust on this and based on their protection, they side adjusted this, which is good football too. I know Mike Norvell well, uh, and they had their side adjusted. Now, for me personally, what I would have did when I showed you the video again, you'll see this, this being even more open. Because listen, there was nothing here. Let's just take the out route cut and throw it right now. Because what they do is, at LSU, they're trying to get fancy and out coach themselves. They drop the 330-pound zero technique nose guard, and they try to drop it into coverage, which is an NFL more zone drop fire scheme. And it, it absolutely looks worse than fucking Brian Kelly's accent sound. So Yeah, well, you, you, at, listen, as a former nose tackle, that's the last place I want to be. No shit. And, yeah. and Coach, tell him, as you play both sides of the ball, tell him, I did. everybody – Tell everybody out there that your center understands by this guy barely even touching you that he's not coming. He's not going exactly. to well, he's either he's either, he's either setting you up. He's either setting you up for a game. He's so the out. other guy's gonna ear hole you, or if he comes up and he just titty fights you and backs up, you automatically have to start panning for where <laughs> the next guy's coming from. Because whenever somebody either crosses your face or when he's on your shoulder and he exits. We've got to go from one to two and look back. And the faster you can look back, the faster you're going to be successful. So here exactly. we are talking about this. Yep. We're talking about that. Is out of the ordinary. He's not at 12. He's not at 10. He's not on the hash. Exactly. He's inside. Perfect. He's got number two vertical. So we're talking about, okay, we're going to, we're going to get this here. We're going to make sure um, – they replace and him. And there he comes. That's what I said, Coach, and I just said on the board, look at the out cut here. If they ran it out by number two, instead of the slant here, if they just run an out cut, look at all the space and opportunity there. But anyway, it worked out for him. But watch the nose guard try to get into coverage. Yeah, I don't like the bottom of the of the offensive line either, though. They're, they're letting a free runner go on the right, too. So, it, look, there's a lot to fix there for the offensive line for sure. Nah, no doubt. Yeah, that's that's not good. They got two free runners. They're lucky to pick that one up right there. Look, yeah. LSU was so poorly coached yesterday. I mean, that their special teams was bad. Look, you can, in my opinion, if your special teams are bad, it's an it's an indicator that your entire team is poorly coached. No question. Because your special teamers are usually second string guys that aren't starters, but the good teams in the NFL and college football <laughs> put a lot of their starters on special teams. Because I, I don't think it's a backup position. I think it's an extremely important part of the football team. And if your special teams is very well coached and they know what they're doing and they never fuck up, you're going to win those battles where the other team is dropping the fucking ball. Yeah, LSU dropped two punts last night. Like, 
two and and then got two field goals blocked, a field goal and the extra point to win the fucking game. So if their special teams doesn't take a huge dump on themselves last night, they fucking win. At, yeah, Period. No so hey, let's change let's change avenues here. I want to break this down. We just were talking off yep. the air before the show. We were talking about how we don't like how football's become so soft. We're in the shotgun. We're running tempo. We got a yard to go, but we're taking a negative step to gain a yard, which is an oxymoron, and we're losing yards before we gain them. And we can get under center and hand the football off. Here's my argument to that. When we do go under center and we do decide to do something that we don't practice consistently, we get tossed, which is we, me and you oh love. Oh, my God. This was toss. so terrible last toss. night. And – Oh, we get coach. Let me just first of all, let me break this down. I, I got to show this to the people. I want to get. I mean, it's, the, it's one of the worst play calls I've ever seen. And then the one tonight with the Alugale, bro. It's like they didn't watch the game last night. What the fuck are we doing? Hey, coach, can you see me? Yep. All right. So, look, I want to coach up the mechanics of toss because we got issues in. With Florida State was going to my right, your guys left in this film here and the quarterback opens up and does what we used to call quick pitch all right it's very unsound if you don't coach it a lot and you don't do it a lot so what happens is the timing is going to be off and timing on toss as you know coach whether you're pinning and pulling it up front or whether the o line or the quarterback and the running backs mechanics are on in sync reversing out after you seek the football with your third hand we want to reverse out and get the ball to him because it times up better and it gets everyone to bite a hair this way when we open up this way. All so you need is one false people, step. We hold people for coach to get up to the second level with his own yep. line. So why would you open to it directly? It's a behind the back uh, pitch. It's but a behind the back ball. allows angles and opportunity like you talk about. Yeah, it, it's angle and opportunity, and we're going to show need, I don't need it to be a highlight. I need you to line up in 21 or 22 or 13 or 23 even and fucking smash the guy in the face in front of you and move him and have the fullback smash the linebacker in the face and go score and shut the door right. on these motherfuckers. Not a toss where a dude drop, where he's looking up because he doesn't want to get hit and he drops the ball and shit. I mean – Fuck, come on. If he had good hands, he played receiver. He plays running back. All right, Coach, we got to get to it because everyone's asking, and, and you're an O-line guy. We, this play right here sickens me to the core, okay? And I don't even know what to where to begin, okay? I don't even know where to begin. First of all, let me get on the board. Let, I want you to talk me through this here because <laughs> I want to get to just basic, you know, we're going to – First of all, let me draw it up correctly. We're, we're actually put inside feet of each other here, and we're overlapping each other. It's a bad alignment, but I want you to see it. And we got a tight end here, and we got a wing here, and this is what we don't want, okay? First of all, Coach, explain to them how important it is to, to time this mechanic every day at practice. We it, want it's... to from the snap to the holder to the kicker, in 0.85 seconds. That's and ideal. right when the ball snapped, everybody's got a hard step together and get big through your chest and nice base and wide through your shoulders and make sure that there's I don't look, you don't need to kill the guy in front of you. All you need to do is is stop his momentum to where he wants to go. If I can get a, sh a hand on a shoulder, that stops momentum. If I can get a hand on his chest, that stops momentum. I'm not looking for anything special. Like you said, it's .085. The, the fact that they had one blocked earlier in the game and then they had the fucking game winner blocked, once again, it's showing you that the, the special teams coach, like, that guy should be fired today, bro. That was fucking terrible. He shouldn't have a job. That was fireable. So uh, what's the quickest way to a point? Bad. What's the fastest way to a point? The fastest way to a point? Straight line, right? Usually, yeah. So why the fuck are we – why are we worried about this guy at all? Just common common knowledge. Why are we worried about him when this guy has a straight point line to the fucking kicker? Because and they're they're not being coached, dog. That's why. 
I agree. I agree. I, I agree. I'm just. I'm just saying, I agree fully that they're not being close. I, I, I mean, we clearly see that shit. Um, I mean, it's terrible. I mean, it, they, listen, they, it, folks, it is awful. I gotta be honest. I gotta, I gotta be honest with this. I broke it down this morning on the morning show. There's no fucking way you can tell me that tackling is at an all time low, injuries at an all time high. This type of shit right here, mechanics of basic fundamental coaching, is at an all time low. And you cannot tell me it's because we have a new team every spring at every school. And it's like we have so many transfers um, that you can't tell me that you're getting coach. Let me, let me, let me, I, I see you shaking your head. Let me break it down why I say this. You just got coached at Colorado for two years. You left and you went to Nebraska. And then you left again and you went to UCLA. You just got coached how to tackle four ways. And you can't tell me there's any type of camaraderie, good, bad, or indifferent. You're being taught four things, and you can't there, tell me there, it's good. There's, there's good. no camaraderie, but there's no difference between that and the NFL. There's guys in the NFL that jump around every year and are still expected to do their fucking jobs. Yeah, it but they went through college. They went through college. It all, it all comes down to it. look. It all comes down to doing your job. Number one, I do agree with this. The the inability to actually run full speed drills and practice and like everybody being afraid of getting hurt is why there's so many fucking ugly football plays and call it. There's no preseason. This is their preseason game. Their preseason game is a nationally televised game in front of a hundred thousand motherfuckers against Florida state. Like, sorry, but this isn't a preseason game. We're going full tilt. So they, they don't go full speed in practice anywhere. I mean, it, it's very rare for college football and especially NFL teams to go full bore after each other. So it's hard to, in my opinion, it's not only hard, I think it's damn near impossible to match the speed and intensity of that. Even if you are going full speed in practice, it's still going to get jacked up a notch when you get on the field. But I, I don't remember in college and in the NFL not having sp full speed days. There used to be at least one day a week where you're going fucking full speed in practice every four day. Days a week. And we're Fuck. getting it on. Like, it is, it is, yeah, it is, back in the Matt, day, it used to be every Matt, day, bro. I got I to gotta, I gotta show my age here. I was live four days a fucking week. Exactly. Like, like, I don't remember not taking full pads off. Like, I was in full pads all the fucking time. I don't remember this, like, this, this fucking sweaty, you know, like sweatshirt, hoodie, fucking practice stuff. I don't get it. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. That's for goddamn sure. There's right, definitely a just, lot of guys, a lot of guys just, putting uh, a lot of faith. There's and, a lot of, of coaches putting a lot of faith in college kids 17 to keep their jobs. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, let me, let me, let me break this down to you. I want to, I want to share this real quick. I got hit up by an, a former NFL guy last night when I posted this, and he was like, Coach, why are we not talking about number 50 leaving his guard on an island and leaving him for blast? And I go, listen. I said, I get what you're saying, but our bottom line is if this fucking up back wing steps down, this play don't happen. The ball, it's a kick, and it's good. I want to make sure everyone's clear. The ball got blocked, and the ball still hit the fucking upright. So this ball, it have been a good kick. if we just put a hand on this fucking beeline shooter here. Yep. Do your job. Just get one hand on him and you you go into overtime and the game's totally different. But so here we go. I mean, we look, we're coaching I think, I think Brian Kelly really, really, really took a bite of a sandwich that he doesn't, un he doesn't, he doesn't get it. He's <laughs> not say, Fuck. like the, the SEC is not Notre Dame and Notre Dame is not the SEC and. He, I think the Notre Dame was a perfect job for him. He had a like you had the world by the balls. Why are you jumping at LSU like this? Like it's just not you, dog. Like I, I think that this is going to be a monumentally bad fucking move. He's going to be Jim McElwain, dog. Like McElwain went to Florida and ended up in Central Michigan. I think Jim, Brian Kelly is going to end up. He's going to go to LSU and he's going to fucking end up back in Cincinnati after Luke fucking Pickle gets the Notre Dame job. <laughs> and, and you know the cool part is. He hmm. killed a guy nobody wants to talk about. And then and then he didn't do really shit for the kid's family. And then you want to talk about he got $10 million for this performance, coach. $10 yeah. million. Yeah. You can't tell me if they paid me and you, we wouldn't have been looked better than this last night. 
Well, that's my thing is I don't I, – I understand football is hard, but I don't think it's difficult. Like, I, it's, it's not as hard as people make it. And I, my thing is, like, I'm a big dumb grunt, and if I could learn the ball the way I know it now on both sides in the NFL by myself essentially – by just taking the tutelage of Bill Callahan and the other coaches I had in front of me, if I can if I can figure all this out and be able to coach at the level I can, and help guys learn the way that they do around me, then I'm wondering what some of these college coaches are doing consistently. Like, again, I I think that there's a lot of and this comes back to it a lot of the good old boy coaching. There's a lot of coaches that are out there just they have jobs because their buddy has a job. You know, like if you look at the Broncos. Coach Hackett got that job this year with the Broncos, and then he went and hired his best friend to be the defensive coordinator, and he brought three of his best friends from the Packers, and, you know, like, it's best friend ball. And I hope it works. I want the Broncos to win, but I don't know if best friend ball is usually the best way to go. I, I want somebody that's going to hold me accountable. Hey, I'll tell you right now, Matt, I'll just let everybody know, contrary to belief, I'll never hire a friend again. Ever yeah, hiring life. friends is hard. It's the worst. Hey, uh, that sucks. What's Georgia the Tech doing? Are they doing something? Because I'm seeing the chat go crazy here. No, it's fourteen to three. They ain't doing shit. I, they, they Clemson just had a nice strip sack. Uh, unless I missed something, I'll rewind it here. But I don't think anything's going. on. Georgia Tech ain't going to do nothing. Come on, Georgia. The last time Georgia Tech was good, they were running the fucking option. No shit. Uh, no, the Georgia Tech scored. It's fourteen. It's fourteen. It's 14 oh, 10, Georgia Tech. Tech. Paul Johnson is a dude up front. All right, so look, let's coach this up real quick. So I, I want everybody to know we've already broke it down. We're right here at the nice end here. Point. We're going to break this down. We clearly don't need to chase this edge rusher. We just No. You already see we want to step inside with our inside foot, and then we want to – Inside wanna... out. You know how many yeah. fucking people in the world can, can bend this and make this play? To the kicker side, too, that's the thing. The other guy's the one we have to worry about. The other one's going to clear path and go to the kicker. Now, you never see a block on the side of the kicker, ever. Never. So, it, yeah. it's just it's, – it's stupidity by the players and bad coaching by the coaches. So Yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking horrible. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, Matt, there's an old adage when you're a head coach. You, your special teams is as good or as important as the head coach wants it to be. And that's just what it is. Because that's why you see so many head coaches that take the onus of, like, for example, at CU when I was there, Coach Barnett, he had a special teams coach, yes, but he ran the special teams. Yes. Yes. Um, so, all right, let's break down this first so half of this game. Down, we jump in um, I want to get into this real quick and take your thought on this. You know, Georgia yes, Tech does what the fuck Oregon was doing. We're an empty versus a Clemson team who can get to your quarterback with just four Quick. people. They're just yep. superior to your athleticism and your O-line. Look at Clemson's D-line. Look at Georgia Tech's O-line. Why are we tricky dick in them? And, and the second part is, Coach, let me make it big for you because I know you got that cataract. We're smoking that weed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me, let me, let's look at the personnel. So everybody out there that don't understand personnel and just by looking at Body types, okay. If you're a coach long enough, Matt's let's just say Matt coach uh coach is the defensive coordinator, I'm the offensive coordinator. Coach is scheming me based on my personnel. We got a tight end down here on the bottom, and then right up there. top you have a running back body type. Exactly. So we're in eleven. Yeah, so you're you personnel wise, okay. We're in eleven and empty, but so you're knowing probably gonna match coach, that with explain nickel, to them. Right? Yeah, explain to them. We can yeah. man this tight end. And we can fucking 100%. man or put a packer on this running back, and we still can bring a hat to the box and okay. be and be sound. And, and it's like we got a running back now. If there's five wideouts out there, it's a different gill. We got to do some different things. Well, if it look, if it's empty with five wideouts, and it's it's zero empty with five wideouts, or it's oh one empty with a tight with end. a fucking tight end that can get it, like a Darren Gronk, Waller, Gronk type, yeah, Gronk. Like the, you got to you you're gonna have matchup problems, but if you're just walking a college tight end and a college running back out there trying to confuse Clemson, I mean it's laughable. So Clemson just walks the front side linebacker out to the running back. They walk the other linebacker to the tight end. They can still play over the cover two. Right. Then they have double stacks here because they've got a three side and a two side, and they and then you're throwing a two yard route there, rallying and tackling. So. It's just another way to run the football. It's just a, sh a short pass these days. Is a short run back in the day. 
Um, I personally, with a big quarterback like this, this this kid is a really good athlete. And this this kind of look here, yeah. I would be more apt to quarterback draw and run look it than just throw look at the it middle of the field. Look how much space he has. Look at this. The mic, the mic backers dropping, hole dropping. That's what I'm saying, man. I mean, he's the and you've got this other linebacker, he's running to the flat. So they're playing an over the top shell type coverage where they can just rally and tackle like this. And look, Clemson's defense is fucking nasty. And I know that Georgia Tech just scored on them. It's not like they're not going to give up any fucking touchdowns, but it's 14-10 right now. If you remember last year, Georgia Tech actually played Clemson really tough. So, you know, Georgia Clemson's ranked fourth. A lot of people have high hopes for them, but I, I don't think they're ranked fourth because of their offense. They're ranked fourth because of their fucking defense. Yeah. And coach, I gotta break. I gotta ask you something and tell people. I want you to break this down for the naysayers out there that don't understand um, this. Yeah, and those those videos I sent you too at the end of the show, folks. Stay on because we've only got a couple more minutes here with us talking. But we, I sent him a bunch. I sent coach a bunch of information and films that we're going every week. We're going to break down more and more NFL stuff and college stuff for you and post it at the end of the show so you get an indication of what we're talking about. And and I, I, wanted, I want you to just reiterate a little bit for people that don't know it. When you're inferior and you're playing a team that's super loaded, like for me, and for instance, in high school, if I had to play Long Beach Poly or St. John Bosco and I'm an inferior team and we're less talented, I'm going to slow the game down. I'm going to try to keep the ball on Big offense. Time. I'm yes. going to try to run the football – and I'm not going to run laterally where it eats into your fucking strength of being athletically more gifted than me. I'm going to go yes. vertically. And Oregon against Georgia, inferior team. Why were they in quads? Why are we in empty? Why are we throwing the ball laterally against a team like Georgia who is fucking superior athletically? Why are we trying to go lateral at a Clemson who has nine out of 11 players on defense going to the draft next year? I so can't like, answer the question. I don't know. As, as the quarterback and the offensive guru, why would you do that? I don't get it. And if I'm the offensive line coach or an offensive lineman, I'm literally on the sideline going, what the fuck are we doing? But the thing is, like, they have the entire – this is the thing that kills me about the Oregon thing especially – they have the they have Dan Lanning who ran that defense, and he thought this was the best way. Yeah, I know, but he thought this was the best way to attack them. This is the way he thought this would be the best way to go attack the Georgia defense, like running sideline to sideline. Everything that we saw people try and do to them last year that didn't fucking work ever, and like the only time they lost, Alabama went right at them the whole game. And then they had to acclimate that for the title game and then figure it out after they after they tested it on Michigan. So, look, man, I think that the best way to win every football game is to attack them between the eyes. And then, and then make them walk one safety into the box, and then we have numbers and we can go to fucking town. And, and look, Coach is not going to put up these videos, and that's good because I got a sick kid and I got to go deal with this. Um, but all this, all this tape that coach is about to play, this is what we do at a six zero Academy. So go check it out at six zero Academy on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. Check out what we do. We've got a ton of shit on coach tube and coach and I are going to be doing this for you, uh, the rest of the football season. So make sure you subscribe and, and get involved. And we're going to, we're going to take this channel. So we're going to give you these free freebies today but we're going to move on to patreon after this and you're going to have to become a member to get all the videos all the trans you're going to get anything you want if you want quarterback manuals you want o-line tape you want o-line manuals we can help check it out and it's going to be on patreon all right here we go coach you want to coach us through it i'll up the sound i'll have the sound on so basically um you can just hear what this is we got three videos to share with you guys yeah, and I'm gonna look. I'm gonna get off now. I got to go deal with this. And Coach, we'll I'll, we'll be on Wednesday for me being a guest on your show. But folks, these three videos are from the lab at Six Year Academy here in Parker, Colorado, right outside of Denver, where we're where we're stationed. And these are just you know broad NFL plays that we find that we watch on YouTube and all the terminology and everything that we're going over with all the kids that I work with and, and all the pros. So. Um, this Wednesday on my podcast on Savage and Average, we're going to have Billy Turner on, who's a tackle for the Denver Broncos. So that's pretty cool. And then I'll be on Coach's show on Wednesday as well, 
uh, from one to four out there Pacific. And we'll be talking some shit with Sarah, and I'm sure she's going to jive me because her team scored 60 points and my team got fucking hammered. So, woohoo. <laughs> Uh, coach's Twitter, it's on the bottom, it's on the ticker, so go follow him on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, his, his son's got a little sick, so he's going to go deal with him. And I'm going to show you these videos before we get out of here, and then you can see what we're talking about. I'll give you a little snippet, and then uh, you guys can subscribe, and we'll see you guys next Monday for Monday Night Football as we will be breaking down NFL Monday Night Football along with the college weekend um that that was before so this is just the first night i, I appreciate it. you guys man 150 people on a, on a on a monday night is great so i appreciate you guys coming Good on shit, folks all right coach all right matt later welcome to six zero football academy we're in the lab down here uh evaluating baltimore cleveland monday night football last year remember you can get all the football glossary information and the breakdowns all the film reviews uh, at Six Zero Academy on Twitter and Instagram. Check out SixZeroAcademy.com for all the information on the gym, how we do things here. Uh, the Dungeon family gets the lab every day, but uh, the football glossary. Uh, Eleven personnel is one back, one tight end, three by. Coach breaks it down fundamentally all the way to the core, so he does a great job, man. And he breaks it down on his smart board. He's nickel corner. And he coaches the kids the every Both day, so he does a hell of a job. So if he was this is the things you're going to see man. by me and him. We're going to be coaching so it up. Good. And so they have that great is what you see great on a daily basis. And this so I want you to see that and uh, understand what we're going to do here on Monday night. So there's a lot of film that we already have that he's going to break down. Welcome to the lab down here at Six Zero Football Academy. I am your owner and out here. We got a force course. We're talking about now, everything. The whole point right. of an odd So we're going to break down everything wall. from fronts to so what we call here. fronts to what we call pressures to what we do everything. And we're going to also break down the games. Once we figure out how to live stream some things, It'll be all right. So, hey, man, I appreciate you guys all coming in. Go watch the game. Enjoy the rest of your holiday. And uh, we will see you tomorrow morning for the wake-up show right here at 5 a.m. Pacific, 8 a.m. East Coast. And uh, it was a smashing success this morning. Tomorrow we'll talk about some things leading up to tomorrow's Coach JB show with Sarah Blake that's on tomorrow at 1 to 4. So we're packed house nowadays on this uh, channel. And uh, – Make sure you tell your buddies, man. Hit the button. Hit the like button. Become a member if you're not one because if you want to get this coaching gear, you're going to have to be a subscriber and a member. Appreciate you guys. Now stay tuned to my Twitter and Instagram as I'm going to talk shit about the rest of this game out here as I smoke my stick and drink my yak. See you guys tomorrow morning. Peace.